Hi, this is Michelle Weidenbenner, otherwise known as Monday Matters with Michelle. You can change your life if you focus on one word at a time. Today's word is encourage. And I think this is one of my most favorite words ever because this word has the power to not only change your life, but it can change other people's lives exponentially. Hi, Brian. And let me explain, okay? This week, I met a woman on Facebook. Never knew her before. Her name is Bonnie. And we were kind of at the same Facebook page for writers. We're all thinking about writing books and we try to encourage each other. Well, Bonnie had this tagline on her Facebook page that said, she was, she had a business or her tagline was hope for healing hearts. And I, I asked her, can you be more specific? I want to know more about you, Bonnie, other than she was born in Detroit like me. But I said, I want to know more about you. Which hearts do you heal? What are you working on? And just by reaching out with that question, I met an incredible woman. And she said, well, let me tell you what I do by sending you this newscast. Um, it was a, a live video feed from the Detroit News. And in this, I'll put it in the comments section for any of you who happen to want to watch it. But this news um, article, if you will, or this broadcast, hi, Cindy, was about her son-in-law. Okay, so her son-in-law had a father who committed a murder. Her, so her son-in-law's father killed somebody and he was devastated. He was like, never in a million years would I imagine my father could kill somebody. I, it was just beyond belief. But what he struggled with was something that many people struggle with and that is, and nobody ever talks about them. They, when somebody dies from a murder, they focus on the victim as they should be and the victim's family. But there's somebody else who struggles with this and that is the murderer, the, the person who committed the crime, it's his or her family. And in this case, it was Bonnie's son-in-law. And he would go out in public and he would feel like people were looking at him um, are they, are they judging him? He's the son of a murderer. What kind of person is he? And he would, he, he felt blame and shame. Even though he wasn't the person who committed the crime, he identified with that. Because after all, this was his father, right? So, and, and there are many mothers of people that commit horrific crimes, that struggle with the shame and the embarrassment and wonder, do people look at me and blame me for what my son did? So Bonnie, in hearing her son-in-law's um, grief for this, tried to find a support group for him and there were none. So she started this support group for victims, um, for family members of those who committed the crime because there were none other out there. And in the process, she's been doing this for nine years now, in the process, she discovered that there are 40,000 people just in Michigan who struggle with this, who are never really thought of. They are left behind they, in the burden and the shame of what their families um, have done. And they think about, they think about the victims and those families of the grieving um, and, and knowing that they are a part of the family of the person who committed the crime. It sounds kind of complicated, but here's the thing. In the end, I reached out to Bonnie and I said, oh my goodness, you need to write the book. You need to build a program for people like this, who you are mentoring, who you are helping right now and, and go on to Watch your efforts exponentially multiply because there are so many people who need you, Bonnie. Bonnie has been doing this for nine years. She's an expert in how to do this, right? 
So I, I'm here, hi Jim, I'm here to encourage you to make a difference. And maybe you saw my quote on my Facebook um, today was, if you wanna be unforgettable, then encourage somebody. Because when you encourage somebody, your efforts exponentially multiply. Bonnie, who I had encouraged, sent me this note and she said, oh my goodness, you encouraged me when you had nothing to gain. I was not gonna reap any reward financially from helping her move on with her project, but she was stuck and she was trying to decide, should I really do this? And I said, yes, you should. And there's no reason why you can't do it for a profit because this is your expertise. This is what God has gifted you with. These all these gifts of how to be more to other people in, in that realm and who better to do that. So write the book, build a program, teach courses, and then teach trainers all around the United States and beyond on how to help these, these hopeless people who are stuck in a rut and are grieving and are left behind. And so Bonnie said to me, oh my gosh, you have just, propelled me, given me this nudge to move on with this in my life to help other people. Well, oh my gosh, I was, I was like, oh, okay. Well, all I did was really encourage her just a little to move into what she was good at already. So I'm saying to you today, some people say, oh, Facebook, all you do on there is complain. I have met more people on Facebook and encouraged more people that have built my life and, and helped them on their journeys than I would have ever done sitting in my little home writing by myself. So even so, I'm saying encourage somebody else. And maybe that just means sending somebody a private message. Maybe you saw that they are having a bad day. All it takes sometimes is to leave a little letter, leave a couple little sentences, sentences for somebody to encourage them. And guess what? When you do that, you become unforgettable in their lives. And your efforts, they could exponentially multiply. So make it a great day. God bless.